Welcome to Swipe. Here's what we've got for you on this week's show. Kit checks into a hotel of the future where the staff understand 27 languages. The tech entrepreneur behind Mumsnet tells me how the site has saved lives. And Lucy brings us a mythical adventure with a wolf goddess, no less. That's all to come for you after a quick look at the tech stories that got us talking this week. Apple is snapping up Shazam, the UK-based song recognition app. We don't know the size of the deal, but some reports estimate the price tag was around £299 million. One of the oldest names in the British games industry, Codemasters, could be about to take its shares public. The company produces games including Formula One's range for the PS4. Sky News has learnt Codemasters' owner has approached banks about a public listing in the coming months. Facebook's responded to criticism made by former employee Chamath Palihapitiya, who accused the tech giant of ripping apart the social fabric of how society works. The firm says he hasn't worked there for more than six years and they've realised how their responsibilities have grown since then. And a pilot's been getting festive over Germany by flying in the shape of a Christmas tree. The captain traced the pattern from Hamburg as far as Stuttgart before returning five hours later. Now. What matters to you most when you stay in a hotel? Cleanliness, quality of the food, responsiveness of the chatbot concierge, or the staff's ability to translate your request into 27 languages? Well, that could soon be your top consideration, as Kit found out. Hotels, big buildings full of small rooms connected by endless corridors. They may all look suspiciously similar, but this one is different. It's being used as a testing ground for tech startups to see how their new inventions go down with paying guests. Hundreds of companies from 24 different countries applied for the chance to trial their gadgets here, from in room information projectors to relaxation headsets. And I've come to see the three finalists in action. My mind is clear the world first truly wireless here, but to enable people to communicate simultaneously. Quisiera una habitación más grande. Can I have a bigger room? Yes, we can absolutely get you a bigger room. Just hold on one moment. We could have 27 people all speaking different languages and get it translated simultaneously. No other translation system in the market currently can do that. And once you've had your check-in chat translated in real time, it's time to head up to the room where the next innovation is waiting. Hi, I'm Kit. Hi, I'm Tiago from Hi Jiffy. Nice How to meet you. you. Hi Jiffy started Checking life as downstairs. a way to book hotel rooms in Facebook, but has morphed into a chatbot concierge service. Hi Jiffy is a chatbot that replies on a real-time basis to frequently asked questions of guests. Hotels are trying to engage more and more with guests to increase uh, the number of direct bookings. You can ask it basic questions and even request extra items for your room, although they're delivered Hello. by a human, not a robot. Oh, fantastic. Thank you very much. Did you do anything else? No, that's great. The final bit of tech on show here at the Marriott Testbed programme is OptiShower, a way of guests to earn food vouchers by cutting down on their room's water and power usage. But are these kind of aids really necessary, or will many see them as gimmicks? Hotels are caught in between sort of having their, their core customers that might want a more traditional experience and perhaps millennial customers um, who, who want to experience the hotel in different ways. But if technology is discreet and you almost don't notice it and it's there for those that want to use it, then I think it can definitely work well. The hotel's trial in this tech will be hoping that their desire to innovate doesn't end up putting off some of their more private and less tech-savvy customers. Kit Bradshaw, Sky News. It's nearly Christmas, that time of year that children love and parents deal with. It got us thinking about how technology has influenced parenthood since we were young. Parenting websites like Mumsnet have become institutions. And according to its founder, the site has also helped save lives. It's been nearly 18 years since Justine Roberts set up a website to help make parents' lives easier by swapping tips and sharing experiences. Now, Mumsnet has its own network of vloggers and experts posting videos about everything from makeup how to's. Better to start soft and build up. All the way to lobster preparation. So now we're going to roughly chop it. It seems tech has changed the parenting experience too. When we started Mumsnet, we were on dial up. 
and so it was just a very frustrating experience for if you remember that. Um, but I think the really big change has been the introduction of the smartphone and for a website like us it means you know people can access mum's net for the advice it provides all the time but it also has huge number of challenges around being constantly distracted and I think for parents you know negotiating that and the slightly addictive nature uh, and family life has been the big challenge. And given that everybody's using their phones now constantly, how do you control any warring mothers or abuse going back and forth? I don't really recognise this warring mothers business, but clearly, in, you know, we've got 30,000 posts a day, uh, 12 million users. Clearly, there are going to be disagreements, and some of those users are extremely tired and fraught. But we ask our users and our community to report stuff that breaks our guidelines. So, if you like, they are the first line of defence, and then we look at everything that's, that's reported. We do that usually within, well, certainly within 24 hours these days. Uh, I'm thrilled that I'm going to become a grandmother. I really can't wait. Over the years, the site's become popular with high-profile figures, keen to reach the mum's net audience. Now, politicians seem to enjoy having a good relationship with mum's net. Why do you think that is? The 2010 election was the sort of peak of that where I think every politician suddenly thought oh my god I've got to be seen to be doing social media and there's this big audience of women who we think might be more swayable. Thank you very much for letting me come online and answer as many questions as I could. We had all the big ministers, uh, opposition and um, government. Then after election they go quite quiet actually so really they're after votes. Um, they mistakenly think that audience is all going to vote the same way, which has never been the case, and that women are only interested in childcare. Is there anywhere where you think mums are still getting a raw deal? Well, there is no question our users think there is a motherhood penalty in their employment prospects. So nine out of ten report that they understand what is meant by motherhood penalty. Either they're less likely to get promoted or they're actively discriminated against when they're on maternity leave. For the users, all 12 million of them, talking to each other on mum's net has also led to some life-saving moments. We've had several situations, ectopic pregnancies being diagnosed and people being told in no uncertain terms, get yourself to hospital right now. We recognise these symptoms, you need to go and, you know, literally, they got there within a couple of hours of, um, of disaster. We've had people who are um, in extreme situations, whether it's domestic violence or, you know, mental health crises, who've had their hands held um, through all that kind of trauma. So, yes, Mumsnet has saved lives, definitely. There's no question about it. Video games time now. And although this time of year can be fairly quiet when it comes to new games, our reviewer Lucy hasn't let us down. Here she is with her views on three new releases. Okami is a very special game. It originally came out on the PlayStation 2, and now it's coming out again on the Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC. So in the game, you play as the sun goddess Amaterasu. You take the form of a wolf, and the game looks beautiful because it's inspired by kind of old Japanese ink wash paintings. And so the whole premise of the game is, as the sun goddess Amaterasu, you're walking around the land of Nippon, and all of the colour has been sucked out of it. You know, these lush green fields are now barren and grey and brown. And you discover that there are these demons that are there sucking all the joy and life out of the land. You can interact with all the animals and it's just an incredibly beautiful game which has all these aspects of puzzle solving using your brush techniques. You have platforming, so jumping around these villages and interacting with the people that you meet there. And I definitely recommend you pick it up this Christmas. Another remaster coming out this week is Loco Roco 2. You kind of control blobs, uh, getting from one end of the level to the next, but you don't really control the blobs, you control the environment around them. So you have to kind of, using the buttons, you have to ch tilt the world, tilt the environment, and in doing so, you can make the Loco Rocos go, like, kind of tumble down using physics. But you can make them jump, so it's a really cool take on a platformer um, and if you want a kind of chilled out experience this Christmas with a game that has an incredible soundtrack definitely take a look at Loco Roco 2. Really? Resident Evil is of course an incredibly famous series of uh, survival horror games but in recent years 
the entries have kind of veered away from survival horror and they've been more action focused and a lot of core fans haven't necessarily been happy with that. But Resident Evil 7 takes the series back to its survival horror roots. Seriously, this is the scariest installment uh, of the Resident Evil series. And what Resident Evil 7 does so well is how it builds tension and it is legitimately terrifying. There's a lot of jump scares in there, so it's maybe not for the faint-hearted, but it manages to, to create this environment where you are constantly on edge and it's a fantastic game. This week they're coming out with the Gold Edition, which includes Resident Evil 7, the full game, and all of the DLCs, so that includes Band Footage 1 and 2, End of Zoe, which includes some brand new areas for you to wander around in, and Not a Hero, which features Resident Evil, like, main man, Chris Redfield. So if you, if you missed out on Resident Evil 7 earlier this year, definitely pick up the Gold Edition because you get all of those goodies with it too. We've reached the end of the show. Thank you for joining us. As always, I'll be back with more Swipe next week with a festive special for you. In the meantime, follow us on Twitter at Sky News Swipe. Bye-bye.